Hi, my people. Um, I was just reading this beautiful book when I became really inspired to start reading um, bits and pieces of these beloved books that I'm loving. So I'm going to be reading an excerpt of this book as a bedtime story. Today we're going to be reading an excerpt out of Don Juan and the Art of Sexual Energy by Marilyn Tunshund was um, Don Juan's sacred partner and they um, practiced dreaming, lucid dreaming as medicine and Tantra um, in the traditional Mexican shamanism traditions. So yes, in this time of um, lots of different inorganic things, we want to read things that make us feel a true connection to nature. So the chapter that we're reading today is number six, Drawing and Releasing Energy in Nature. When I stepped out on my side, the first plant I spied was an aggressively large jimson weed, also called the datura plant, or taluache. Growing not far from a mature, shady mesquite, the datura plant seemed to concentrate my attention. Despite my efforts to interest myself in the plants of the surrounding area, I kept returning my gaze to it. Toluoche, Chan commented, pointing to the datura as he walked around to my side. She likes you. Can't you smell her from here? I could, in fact, discern what I would have described as an itch in the air, seemingly coming from the breeze that blew directly behind the hardy plant. Let's walk over there, Chan suggested. The plant was not in bloom and was wider and lower to the ground than a male plant would have been. The stalks were obscenely thick and covered with plentiful bunches of leaves and spiked round seed pods. Datura is really a woman's plant. So I begin with you here, Chong said. A tea made from the leaves will bring a woman into heat and a paste of the freshly ground leaves rubbed on the body or produce a flight of energy in the body, often used by witches for pleasure, vision, and to strike at an enemy. Chong knelt down to show me a thick cluster of the leaves. The Maya smoke the leaves in ceremony to divine or to dream the location of lost persons or objects. We also drink a tea made of Kalia Zacatichichi, which grows only in the Chiapas for the same purpose. In the ceremony, the entire community drinks the tea and enters into brief but intense periods of dreaming induced by the plant, followed by involuntary awakenings, during which time we discuss the information we have brought back. When the hemen smokes datura leaves, it is done alone and during or following the smoke, or in dreaming later, sight of that which is lost will come. The shade of the mesquite tree became very inviting as its leaves rustled in the late autumn breeze. Chong and I both sensed this, and after sweeping two spots clear of leaves and rubble, we sat down underneath the tree with our backs against the trunk. Nature is overflowing with vital and sexual energy, and a practitioner can avail him or herself of this by allying with elements of the natural world, elements such as the wind, the sun, water, earth, metal, stone, plant life, and creatures, Chong continued. There are infinite entry points in waking and dreaming. Everything from basic acts such as eating, drinking, breathing, walking, bathing, and sunning, to sophisticated supplications, invocations, and mergings practiced by shamans and healers. One way that a healer learns about the curative properties of plants, for example, is through dreaming. Let's say that someone comes to me with an illness that I have never seen before and cannot cure at the time of their visit. John gives me a nudge. I supplicate to the forces and spirits to show me a vision of the cure in dreaming. If it takes the form of a plant with which I am not familiar, I must then bridge my dreaming and go out into the world stalking the plant. I silence my mind and allow my energy body to guide me pulling my physical body along as if by wires. I soften my gaze, 
enter into dreaming awake by opening my dream at the moment of the revelation and just wander through the jungle or forest until I find the plant. When I find it, I express thankfulness and make a request of the plant spirit by explaining my dream and my search. Then, in order to receive the methods of preparation and administration, I fall asleep at the sight of the newly discovered plant and enter into dreaming again with my intent. Once I have been blessed with all the knowledge I seek in dreaming, I then awaken and ask permission of the plant to take some of it and prepare and administer it in the ways that I have been shown. Upon returning to my home, I always place a portion of what I've taken on my altar, not to be used as medicine, but to be a representative portion of the plant entity to whom I wish to send blessings. I then instruct my patient in the ways they are to administer their cure according to what I have dreamed. If they are very ill, I follow those instructions myself and administer the medicine along with any other treatments or ceremonies I may have dreamt. Each night during the curing process, I dream the patient well and seek to open those dreams with the patient each time we interact in the waking world. Listening to the passionate, intimate nature with which Chang approaches healing, I understood why power had selected him as a natural healer. My eyes were moist when he finished talking. I want you to try the same thing, he said. He got up from the ground, dusting off his backside. This Tuoloche has a message for you. While I scout around for other plants, I would like you to fall asleep under this kind tree near the plant and let her talk to you. See if she will share her strength with you. She is powerfully sexual and a survivor. Remember, when making an ally, always share something in return. Chong left me one of his sacks so I could use it as a pillow and I curled up on my left side under the mesquite tree facing the plant as he walked away into the desert. I have never had any trouble falling asleep. Rather like a cat, I find that I can luxuriate in deep relaxation until it becomes ecstatic. Don Juan once remarked to me that felines are outstanding dreamers who know how to draw energy from the sleep state. Unlike many creatures who awaken sluggishly, cats will sleep up to 16 hours per day, and yet they are one of the most agile, supple, and powerful of all of nature's creatures. Within minutes, I was snoozing pleasantly in the morning sun filtered by the overhanging branches of the large mesquite. I dreamed of yawning, awakening, and opening my eyes to find that the large jimson weed was growing in my direction. The plant extended itself towards me and scuttled across the ground by sending out tentacle-like feelers covered with leaves that enveloped and eventually swallowed me. I was moving, was moving through the interior of the plant, much like a whole egg moves through the body of a snake when swallowed. Green hemoglobin flowed around me, and everything I saw filtered through a greenish hue. Deeper and deeper I went, being swallowed into the heart of the plant, the fragrance of the weed and spice permeating the dream. When I arrived at the heart, my legs became the roots, my arms the branches. A trumpeting white flower sprouted as my head and my ovaries turned in on themselves to become spiked, rounded seed pods. I spread like a starfish in five directions, I felt a throbbing and pulsing as life force poured into my body. A sensation of warmth accompanied the feeling of flight, and I could take in air as if my entire being had transformed into giant lungs. Fire from the molten earth began to flow in through my feet, the very tips of my roots, and my abdomen received a cool wellspring of water, drinking, gurgling, filling, and the circulating, that life-giving, crystalline cleanliness. The fragrance became known to me as my potency, my hypnotic state, my bewitching essence. I felt this as became one with the plant, truly became its entirety. I remember Chong's words that I should give something in return. It was a difficult task for I had come naked with nothing. And then I thought, a song, yes. 
The stamen of my flowery head became my golden tongue, and I sang as sweetly as ever I have sang in my life. The words were unknown syllables filled with tone and vibration, the melody haunting and evocative. I began to awaken as I sang. Chang was sitting beside me under the mesquite tree with a full sack of plants. Nice singing, he commented to me and rubbed my head. I was drifting in and out as if reminiscing a romance. As we walked to the jeep and started the slow drive back through the desert along the dirt road, you should keep that song, he said. Always sing it to the Tolache when you need to elicit her favors or when you wish to empower her effects. Just as you merge with her, so may you merge with other elements of nature if they allow it. It is important to always receive an invitation first or to ask permission and receive it. This is foremost. Many clumsy seekers think that they can just go in anywhere without requesting permission. They get punished for it. Never do such a thing. There is no romance or respect in it. It costs nothing to ask permission first, and there is everything to gain. When we were about half of the way along, Chang spied a group of boulders that also seemed most inviting, and again, he instructed me to stop the jeep. We got out and walked towards them, this time leaving the plant sacks behind in the locked vehicle. The outcropping was a rather phallic grouping of smooth standing stones. One had fallen on top of several others, creating an overhang, an enclosed rock shelter of sorts. Before we proceeded any closer, Chong instructed me to feel for permission to approach and possibly enter the enclosure. A response came as a wave of pleasant, nurturing feelings. Chang said that if the sight had refused, perhaps I might have felt a sense of revulsion or eerie mystery, or perhaps a sensation of uncleanliness. We entered through a space between two of the standing stones which formed an irregular circle topped by the fallen stone, and found that the ceiling stone was a panel of rock art. Shaman figures, rattlesnakes, deer, and even a bighorn sheep scurried and danced happily across its surface. Judging by the shape of this structure and the pictographs, Chang began as we seated ourselves within, this seems to have been a vision quest site. I'm sure Huang would agree. In fact, he probably knows about its historical use. What I can tell you is that spots like this were used in ceremony when a particular practitioner would isolate him or herself and to seek to merge with the rock, to go within and learn from the spirit inside. Often as well, the spirit was enticed to come out. This ceiling panel here, he said, pointing above our heads. One moment. Often as well, the spirit was enticed to come out. This ceiling panel here, he said, pointing above our heads, was a kind of Stone Age cinema. The seeker would lie or sit back and gaze into the surface of the rock with a soft focus and a silent mind. The isolation would let the world stop, and through serious gazing and unbending intent, the practitioner's attention would shift to the life within the rock. This was done easily by those who never made the mistake of seeing stones and mountains as dead matter. Rocks, crevices, and caves are portals into other realms of the earth, and mountains are the abodes of spirits. Lizards, like this little fellow here, are the go-betweens of the realms. A small chakwala stopped and peered at us before racing across the earthen floor and into a crevice between two of the stones. Snakes as I know Juan has told you, are the guardians. Males seek to enter into the rock in feminine places and then go towards the masculine, hence this womb-like enclosure on the inside formed by erect stones on the outside. The Maya have a similar initiation chambers in underground caverns. The cave and the water flowing within her are the feminine properties as well as the snake guardians within. The rock surfaces and the fire a shaman brings with him are the masculine, although the fire beneath the earth is female. Together, they can make steam, life, and gold. 
for a male vision questing within a stone is like ritual lovemaking. For a female, it is like being made love to. Lie back here and see what I mean. I lay back and gazed up at the ceiling panel which seemed illuminated in the places by a play of sunlight upon different minerals within it and upon smallpox marks and irregularities of its surface to give the impression of a sky filled with stars. The shaman figures were lively, all carrying sticks or lightning spears, seemingly ready for diminutive intercourse with the cosmos, the rocks, the sky, the clouds for rain. There was something thrilling and erotic about the dance of figures on the panel, and as I lay there I felt titillated joyful, and even wanted to laugh joyfully, as though I was being tickled or flirted with. I could easily envision that in dreaming, these sensations could flower into full-fledged ecstasy. See what I mean? Chang whispered, smiling. Potent, little guys, I responded. Potent energy, Chang replied. I get the impression that making rain was like the sky having an orgasm, I mused. I would hear in the middle of the desert, you better believe it, Chang cheered gleefully. We both laughed and sat up with our backs against the stone. What a wonderful spot. I felt fantastic. Not only had I been protected, replenished, and nurtured by the powers there, but also flirted with. I resolved to come back one day on my own and sleep here. It's an excerpt from this book, Don Juan and the Art of Sexual Energy by Marilyn Tunshand, who is the sacred partner of Don Juan. I just read that little snippet and felt so in love with the pictures that I decided to read you all the story and I hope you enjoyed it and I think that I will be reading more stories for everyone. Much love to family. Good night.